pop punk is a genre that gets a lot of hate. If you do a quick Google search, you'll see that it's generic, repetitive, and cliche. That's how it's viewed in the mainstream. But what if we dive a little deeper? Pop punk is a subgenre of punk rock, and punk rock is a subgenre of rock. And if we really want to get technical, there are over 20 subgenres of punk rock itself. But in today's video, I'm going to focus on pop punk and how that genre has split itself into two factions. In this video, I'll break down the differences between pop punk and, well, pop punk. Trust me, that'll make sense very soon. I'll go over why one of those isn't talked about as much and what bands you should be listening to. Okay, so pop punk and pop punk. What's the difference? So when you think of pop punk bands, what are some of the first bands that come to mind? Blink-182, Sum 41, Good Charlotte, Paramore, or if you're younger like me, it might be Neck Deep, State Champs, The Story So Far. So we have all of those bands, and those bands are pop punk, but what about the other side of pop punk? Bands like Teenage Bottle Rocket, MXPX, The Bomb Pops, Masked Intruder, The Ergs, or, of course, The Ramones. That's the group of bands I want to focus on. Most people refer to them as the Ramones Core Bands or the American Pie Core Bands. I'm going to refer to them as the all caps pop punk bands or Ramones style bands for the video. So, why the Ramones Core label? Well, simply put, a lot of those bands sound like the Ramones and they play pretty straightforward pop songs with riffs. Now you might be saying, uh, yeah Mike, that's all of pop punk, what's your point? Well my point here is that you really don't hear bands like Blink-182 and Teenage Bottle Rocket, for example, talked about in the same breath. It's almost like those two bands are playing completely different genres. To start at the beginning, even the Ramones label themselves as a pop punk band. When I walked in the Ramones and saw them for the first time, I thought they were the most pop band going. We were a fast pop punk, very in your face band. Now we can debate who started punk rock another time, but here we have one of the most legendary punk rock bands of all time saying, yeah, pop punk is a thing, and we are that thing. Now, punk rock, of course, has evolved over the years, and in the mid-2000s, we had that real big explosion of mainstream pop punk, but there's always been this underground contingent of bands keeping that Ramones style alive. So why aren't the Ramones core style of bands more talked about? Well, it seems like the Blink-182s and Sum 41s of the world, and if we go to more uh, current and more modern pop punk bands, your Neck Deeps, your State Champs, those are for when you're a teenager and when you're in your 20s, and then it skews more older when you get to the teenage bottle rockets and the bomb pops style of pop punk. I've seen it online, I've seen it in uh, person at shows, that when you go see you know those bands and the more Ramones style core of things that they just skew older. Those bands really don't tour together either. It really seems like those two factions, the fans of both of those styles of pop punk, don't think the other one is cool. You don't see the Neck Deep fan listening to Teenage Bottle Rocket, and you don't really see the State Champs fan blasting the Bomb Pops. Now calm down in the comments, I'm not saying that every person is like that, just saying that that's the overall vibe that I've seen. And I've seen a lot of people say, well, the Ramones core style of bands are really gimmicky, and they don't really have serious songs, but uh, isn't Blink-182 famous for a lot of humor, and a lot of just stupid, funny jokes? And I love Blink-182 as much as the Neck person and sure a lot of people will then point to oh well Blink-182 has the untitled album it's you know dark and serious and it's one of the best pop punk albums of all time and I'm with you there I agree with you but what makes you think that the Ramones core style of bands don't have their own version of untitled dismissing all of pop punk or at least one side of pop punk as this you know funny gimmicky side to me just shows a lack of understanding of the entire scene Stepping back for a second and talking about the entire scene as a whole, pop punk specifically, a lot of people just say it's, oh, it's the genre that's all silly love songs. Well, I hate to break it to you, but most songs in every genre are about love. I don't need to sit here and be a philosopher to figure out that love is really important to humans and we talk and sing about it a lot. I mean, it's got to be like, what, 90% of all songs ever are about love in some way. Somehow, over the years, this split happened in the scene. Now, I've talked about your neck deeps, your state champs, your story so far as of the world, but for the next part of this video, I want to focus on more of the pop punk Ramones core style of bands and talk about some of my favorites in that scene. Now, 
The Bomb Pops, easily one of the best pop punk bands going today. They released their album Death in Venice Beach this year. Super catchy and infectious. Notre Dame is one of my favorite songs of the year. California in July from the band's album Fear of Missing Out is one of my favorite songs from the band. If you don't listen to anything else that I talk about in this video, listen to that song. It's quintessential pop punk. Now that album, Fear of Missing Out, is more of a West Coast, really upbeat, uh, day at the beach kind of a vibe, while Death in Venice Beach is a little bit more dark, but there's no question that the bomb pops are at the top of the scene. Mast Intruder's 2012 self-titled album is a pop-punk masterpiece, and it's a crime that a lot of these music critic blog sites don't label it as one of the best pop-punk albums of the decade. While the more serious pop-punk revival was happening with bands like The Story So Far, Men Overboard, and Transit, Mast Intruder went the complete opposite direction with this Ramones core style of an album all about masked bandits trying to fall in love. Heart-shaped guitar, How Do I Get to You, the 50s and 60s inspired Wish You Were Here, our top tier pop punk songs. Go listen to that album from start to finish and tell me that you're not instantly hooked on the band. While personally I would love to see Mast Intruder ditch the gimmick for maybe one album or one EP, there's no question that the 2012 self-titled album is a pop punk masterpiece. Light Years is really just a personal choice, really just for me, let me be a little bit selfish here. I think they're a very underrated band. They came up in that 2010 pop punk revival that I've talked about in the video with the story so far and bands like that. But to me, they never really fit in with those bands. They had more in common with the Alistairs and Homegrowns of the world than they did with Transit and Men Overboard, for example. No gimmicks here, Light Years sings about growing up and following your dreams. The band's 2018 album Afterlife sees the band reflecting on their career and seeing other bands in the scene get the success that they never did. It's my favorite album from the band and a very honest one. I actually didn't consider Direct Hit a part of this group of bands, the more Ramones core style, but when I was doing research for the video, a lot of people label them as one, so I dove a little bit deeper, and you know, they do share a little bit of traits with the more Ramones core style of pop punk bands, so they're on the list. Direct Hit writes songs about the apocalypse, zombies, drugs, so they share that gimmick style that you find in a lot of Ramones core style bands, but they do it so well that it really doesn't matter. On albums like Dome Splitter, uh, Brainless God, Wasted Mind, they're fully Direct Hit, and their unique style of storytelling really shines through. This is a band I'd love to see move away from that apocalypse, end of the world, zombie kind of stuff, because they've really perfected that. I don't know what else they could do. I mean, they could, you know, make another great album like that and surprise me, but me personally, I'd love to see maybe a more personal album, something along the lines of Pup, maybe. I think that would really interest me going forward. Those are some of the bands I think you should check out. There's so many more. The Unlovables, uh, The Copyrights, The Lippies, Jetty Boys. I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody. Good, clean, fun, more on the hardcore side. If you're interested in me covering more of those bands, let me know down in the comments. I'll include those bands and every band that I talked about in a Spotify playlist that's going to be linked down below. My overall message here is just to check out music that you like. Don't worry about what genre is cool and what isn't cool or what people are saying online. Obviously, I cover mostly alternative music here on the channel, but if that was the only type of music I ever listened to, that would be really boring and honestly really sad with all the great music that is coming out. So just check out music that is interesting to you, and who knows, you might just find your new favorite band.
Please like and share the video, subscribe if you haven't, tell all your friends, follow me on Twitter, and as always, thanks for watching.